I'm back. I've got my blanks. This is the bottom section, and I've also got the tip section, but right now we are going to work on installing the handles. And I kind of already did a lot of the work. I've got some video that I'll be putting in on top of this, but um, my friends at Lamy Glass, they sent me three handles and they sent me two rod or two rod blanks. They're uh, two piece rod blanks. But as I, as I assumed, um, doing the handles, I, to me so far is probably going to be the hardest part and, and you got to take your time. Now I used a metal file right here and it's not the right tool. There's another tool that is actually shaped differently. The name of it, uh, you know, slips my mind right now. I want to call it a rasp, but uh, essentially I just took my uh, file and I, and I just filed the cork handle out. Now, if you got a plastic handle, you're not going to have to do this because you're going to be actually building up. But uh, I ended up breaking this piece right here. I broke it and I thought, well, you know, it's, it's cork. I'll just glue it back together. So I started the project at home on my patio because I'm, I'm kind of like a get it done guy. I just figure it out, do it, get it done. And I broke this. And then, so then I just used some epoxy glue and I set it up like this. I put some weight on it. I've got a picture of it sitting on my barbecue with a five, five gallon bucket. And then I just, I just let it glue. And then after it glued, I took these extra sets because it got, you know, it was kind of dirty. It had the epoxy on it. I just took some uh, some sandpaper. This is just some 220 off of my vibrating sander, and I just sanded the the uh, cork grip. And then I took some fine uh, steel wool and just steel wooled it, and then it, it gives it more of a, a cork finish, I guess. You know, more of the roughed up kind of an old school look. You know the the and then the the newer handles are you know nice and smooth and they've got some kind of I don't know if there's a finish on them or a filler but uh, but so then I took the hand grip instead of the butt grip and I did the same thing I just uh, I roughed it up sanded it so I've actually actually I I now have a uh, it's backwards I have a spare grip so if I get another blank I'll have another spare spare grip to you so. Anyway, and uh, so there you go. So if you do make a mistake, um, it's not the end of the world. You can actually fix your cork grip. You can see a little tiny, tiny bit of a line right in here. That's where it was actually broken. But uh, anyway, now I have a spare set. But you got to be careful. So I, I went, when I did, when I rasped these two out in the center, in the holes, I actually wrapped blue tape all the way on top of them. These, uh, the front handle actually has a, a cellophane that's that's been shrink wrapped on it. So it keeps it nice and tight. It's also kind of nice too, because when you're, you know, working on it, you're not getting your dirty hands all over, you know, when you've got the blue tape and the blue tape keeps it together, you know, cause you're kind of, you know, pushing on it and pulling and, and this stuff's delicate. It, it'll, it'll, crack it'll break when i was chiseling this out i had to start carefully because the chisel it's almost like a screw and it was too small or too large to get all the way through there i finally broke through but you have to be gentle because this is what will break the uh the grip so and then frequently check to see how far down the blank it goes obviously right there i'm not far enough down and you don't want to chisel too much out too fast. So literally I would roll the grip and chisel and blow out the excess cork as I went and then slide the grip back down the rod blank until I finally looks like, I don't know, well, it looks like I got it right there. And you want it to just slide on easy. You don't, you don't want it to go too hard or put too much pressure. The front grip, was much easier. I only had to, to rasp out or chisel just a little bit of cork and it fit. It, all, it almost slid all the way down. So literally all I had to do is a little tiny bit, 
to that and it just fit right on. And like I said, you want it snug, not too tight because the cork can crack outwardly. So there you go, perfect. Essentially, you want to start by putting the rod butt on. And I'm just going to go for it here. I've got uh, some two-part epoxy. I know that you know, the rod guys prefer a certain brand, but I'm just, I know, like I said, just getting stuff from uh, the, the store locally, um, friends. So here, let's start, let's start mixing up and we're gonna go for it. Keep a lot of paper towels around. Paper towels are your friend. So this is the perfect spreader and pretty much you get a one-time use. You might be able to use a spreader more than once, but uh, I'm just gonna start spreading the epoxy around, spinning it, and just mixing it up, just like that. And, and I think you wanna be Kind of liberal with this stuff. You don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to be chintzy. Now, let's see, let's just double check that we've got it all the way. Oh yeah, we're perfect, right there. So, now we're gonna slide, slide this down, try not to hit the wall. Here we go, and make sure you got this. This is the butt end. It gets, it gets confusing, trust me. So then when you get here, you want to start to, see it's already gooping out. You want to spin it, spin it as you go. And then that'll, that'll help kind of work it into the grip. So spin it along. I don't know if you can, you can see how it's trying to build up down there at the back. And then uh, just keep working it down. And if there are spots that, you know, maybe there was a spot that you just barely missed as you spin it, you're gonna wrap that epoxy into those little spots and you just wanna fill that up just nice and tight. Just roll it down, roll it down. And that epoxy is just filling the gap and then just get it, just get it even right here with the back of the blank, just like that. So, all right, so there we go, the, the handle is on, I, I, I don't have the butt cap on yet. I think, uh, I think, well heck, let's just go for it. Let's just get the butt cap on now. Why well, stop now? We're on a roll. So I'm just gonna uh, put out some more epoxy here. Now, this is probably gonna get messy. I, I need to check to make sure my acetone is ready. Okay, I got the acetone open. I need to go get something to pry the lid off, but we're all set there. We got our paper towels. And because this is probably going to get, I can guarantee you, this is going to get messy because I'm going to really load a bunch of epoxy in here and really slam it on there. In fact, I think I'll, uh, back knowing that that's going to happen, I think I'll wrap a little bit of some blue tape around this edge. And then uh, I wrapped I wrapped some up here too, just because I was concerned that it might come over, but it was okay. Here we go again. Let's mix up another batch. We're gonna use our same same container. Maybe I might be using too much, but you know who wants who wants a butt to fall off their rod, right? That's no good. Can't have that. I'm gonna switch over this direction because this is the. Uh, this is the hand I want putting the, the glue on. So here we go. I'm gonna put it on the, uh, first I'm gonna put it over the top of here, but I'm gonna put it on the cork first. Try to get it as thick as I can. Just load it right over the cork. Stuff some into the end here a little bit. Get it nice and tight. Going on the cork. And then uh, I've got it, I've got it just loaded on here. I mean, it is thick, 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 thick. Okay, so now rotate that because it wants to come off a little bit. So now I'm gonna take the butt cap Right here is the butt cap. 
And I'm gonna absolutely stuff as much in here as I can get. It's even dripping, it's even dripping down and off of here. So, get that. Set this down. I'm going to grab it. Something's coming off right there. I'm going to load that in there. So, it is getting nice and full. So, here we go. Now we've got the, uh, we got the butt cap. we got epoxy on there. I'm going to slide that sucker on there. It's interesting. I can actually feel uh, it's almost like a little air pressure trying to get out. So now you can see there's there's uh, some goop coming out of the edges. And uh, at this point, I'm going to pull the tape off. And just uh, clean up the epoxy here. And like I said, this you know this is uh, this epoxy. It's a little messy, you know. I'll be honest. Pour a little bit on the paper towel, then uh, you can just kind of clean around the edge here. It, it will dry nice and clear, and then I am essentially just going to set the rod on its bottom here. And we're pretty much done with this phase. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back and do some more cleaning, but I really just wanna let this sit overnight, this, this bottom section with the butt cap on. And then I'll come back and clean it, you know, a little bit more as I go. And this is, this is actually made out of rubber, so it cleans up really well. Um, and there you go. So now we've got the bottom part of the handle on, and then we're going to go to building up the, putting on the real seat next. And that's actually done with uh, a, a rod masking tape. I know it sounds crazy, but that's, that's how it's done. So we're done with this part. I need to go set this down and let it cure, and then we'll keep going. We are back again. And I've got the, the rear handle is glued on now. And I've got the, the I guess you could call them the windings or the, the uh, rod blank tape. It's, it's a little bit tight, so a little bit hard to get out, but that's good. You want it tight. So, so literally, this is, this is just masking tape. I, I blacked this one out because... This rod grip actually has a uh, has an opening right here, and, and you can get inserts for these. But I'm just going. Uh, we'll call it commando, naked, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I wrapped you wrap this uh, masking tape until the uh, rod handle just barely wraps, and, and I'm wrapping it right now. I'm wrapping it the same direction as the tape ended. But you can see, you can see how tight that is. I mean, that, that is tight. And then you've got the top part of the grip and it slides right down nice and snug. And then this is called the, the winding check. This small little, uh, small little loop right here. Essentially it, it kind of glues to the front cork handle. And then when you do your threads along here, you'll come right up against this. And that'll, and then this will also get epoxy on it as we epoxy the threads where we keep our hook keeper here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and glue this all together. In fact, I can just kind of, I'm going to pull this off again, wrapping the same direction as I ended the tape. So nothing peels backwards on me. And then, uh, let's do it. I'm going to pour some, Epoxy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go kind of thick here with the epoxy because I, I don't want to have a loose handle. So I'm gonna put a lot out. 
Now we're gonna mix it up. I cut, I cut this a little flat section and this, this is just a plastic uh, butter knife, but it'll make it a lot, a lot easier to, to mix around. So just start spreading it, mixing it together, going in circles, pull it, and uh, having that flat spot that I made on here really helps out. So get this all mixed up. So we'll start with the uh, Start with the rod handle right here. And uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll probably just kind of drip it on, hold it on over the where I'm mixing. You can I'm just kind of just kind of spinning it here, taking a bit and spinning it around. And uh, I, I don't think you want to you know go easy with the epoxy. Like I said, be liberal, just Load it on there. Just load it up. No, uh, no worries there. Just get it nice and thick. This is going to get pushed back here, so it's not going to be need to be super thick because it's going to get pushed back to the cork as it spins. And then I might, I'll do some insurance pours here. Okay, so that is on there. I think we're going to need any more than that. Loaded. So now I'm going to red slide the real seat back. Now something to keep in mind is, is this is a two piece rod. Um, on a one piece rod, you want to find the, uh, the, the back or the spine. Uh, apparently two piece rods, not necessary. At least that's what I've read. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, you can write comments if you like. So I'm going to, slide this down and I'm going to turn it as I go. I also, you can see I just sucked underneath. I also put some blue tape around the threads of the real seat. So this epoxy didn't clog up the threads. So see, we're just sliding it down as we go. It's starting to get, starting to get tight. Um, almost down to the bottom one. And you can see how it's creating a dam of blue as I go. And it's going to hit right up against the cork, and I'm just going to I'm just going to leave that there. Maybe spin it around a little bit. So that's nice and tight. There is some, you know, a little bit of some glue here that I'll probably have to clean up here in a sec. If you look up in the front here. Here's the wraps right there. And there's kind of a opening. Now as we slide, as I slide this on, it's gonna create that same dam or wave of epoxy. So anyway, I gotta I gotta get moving. So let's let's uh let's guesstimate where we're gonna start here. Luckily I have an extra handle, and I'm just gonna uh, go like this. Okay, so that's pretty much where I want to be. So here we go. We'll just drip it on. Same thing. Like I said, be uh, liberal about it. No reason to uh, be chintzy. Drip it around. Definitely getting it on nice and thick. Let me check to see if I've gone far enough forward. Oh yeah, I've gone too far forward, but that's fine. We'll clean it up. Okay, so here we go. Let's just get this on here quick and get that get that front handle on. There we go. Now remember, this is the first time I've ever done this, so if it seems like I totally suck at it, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm just doing just doing the best I can as a as a beginner, and and this is obviously going to get some some of this pushed back like i said i want i do want some pushed back into this hole and really fill up that so so once again we are gonna come down with the grip and now uh, let's make sure before we get there that we got enough glue up front oh yeah we're just right so so 
Here we go. We'll start twisting it down. And you can see it's already creating quite the dam of glue, or epoxy in front of it. In fact, I gotta start moving faster because I can feel this tightening up on me. I'm a little concerned that I should have uh, put some tape on the front of that, but I can, I'll clean it off with the towel and acetone. So there we go. So last but not least though, and uh, is the, this is called the winding check. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's, it's just that small rubber piece that kind of sits right in front here of the handle. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of uh, epoxy front here and then uh, slide the winding check down right there. Got it. And then this, this will also be, um, this will also have wraps up to it. They're gonna get epoxied as well. So let's very quickly clean up our mess because we've got a big, big gob of goo going on right here. So I'm just gonna do a dry take without spin kind of towards me and, and get as much off of here as possible right there. So that's the first, first cleanup. And then I'm gonna take the acetone and another paper towel. I watched a guy, he cuts, he cuts these into like small squares. I folded it into four, but uh, I'm gonna load this up with some acetone. And then uh, he, he said to uh, wipe it kind of away or towards and away. So we'll try that, just kind of rub it along. We'll just, oh yeah, look at that, that cleans it right up. All right. Just about got it here. I'll pull that off, but yeah, you can see it's getting really nice there. I'll put a little more on here. So like I said, this is the first time I've done this. So I'm literally cleaning and I got sticky fingers and uh, might be getting a little bit of a buzz right now too. So I definitely don't want to match. But uh, here, I'm just cleaning this edge. It's starting to look really nice. You can see now it's just a nice, tight, clean edge. Push it down a little bit. I think I think this is already starting to set up. So I'm gonna just uh, clean this a little bit more, and uh, let me pull the. Uh, I'm gonna pull the tape off of the rear here now. There we go. Here's the blue tape. Don't forget to. Uh, don't forget to have your garbage right here next to you. You'll definitely do some of that. And then uh, this stuff is gooey, gooey. So I'm gonna clean this off now. Same process, just acetone. Then we'll start turning it in here. I think I've just about got it. There's a a little bit in there, but not much really. So, looking really good actually. Yeah, this is looking great. I, uh, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I mean, this is gonna be nice and solid. I mean, so when you're grabbing your reel, you're gonna have like one finger there. These ones, the, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, that's not Nanu Nanu. That's uh, Morkin Mini. I forget. Anyway, one hand is going to be right here. The 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 reel is going to be right between there. So this is kind of the grip you're going to have while you're holding your reel. Anyway, that's it. We got the handles on. I'm probably going to do a little little bit more cleanup, and then uh, and then we're off to wrapping the guides, putting the hook keeper on the tip. Um, just, uh, 
on to the next phase. And uh, this is really exciting. I, I, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. And uh, it's definitely, you know, a little bit of work. The rasping was some work. Uh, but overall, this is really gratifying and fun. Now we have the grips on, the real seat, the butt, everything down here is finished. And so now we're gonna move on to the guides. Now, I just used some blue tape here and marked where my guides are gonna be located. And then I used some, uh, this is just some twisty ties that you might get at the grocery store. And I just twisty tied the guides at the rear. Um, online, you see tape, people use a, a thin tape, but this works great. And I just undo the twisty tie and I can reuse these. So I, I've already taken the tip, it's over here. And I've already marked where all my guides are gonna be on the tip section and uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, physically wrap every single guide and show it to you. This is gonna, we're kind of like on the other side of the hill where we're coasting in. So, so what we're gonna do is start wrapping this first guide. And, and uh, I can't see that great anymore. I'm getting kind of old gray hair, but uh, this, is a, this is a cheat or cheaters, right? If you put two pairs of these glasses on, Everything's really blurry now. Um, I can see the camera, but that's real blurry. With the with the two sets of glasses on, I think these are two seventy fives and and three three point two point seven fives. I can literally see right up close here. So I actually I have a, a close up of video, and it's going to be using the orange thread. So I'll kind of come back and forth, but I'll talk talk us through as we go. How we start this is you take your thread and you lay it across and then you want to just start going over itself. So we'll start turning it here and we just start going over the, uh, the thread itself and then that starts to tighten up. It's kind of annoying having this big tag piece here, but actually it's already starting to go pretty well. And once you get, once you get, I don't know, I, I personally do four or five turns to get it, you know, on there. Honestly, this is, this is going better than the orange thread that you're probably looking at right now. So once you get that wrapped and you've got it tight and I kind of, I kind of like to, you know, maybe go at least a, a eighth to a quarter of an inch in front of the guide seat right there. And then, and then you can kind of hide, you know, you can cut the excess tag off now once you got the enough tension. And, and you don't want to like slice at it. You want to put uh, your razor blade. This is just a box knife blade that I grabbed out of the warehouse. And you want to pull the line into the knife. You don't want to start cutting because you might cut some of your wraps. So keep that handy right there. So from there, you just start, uh, you know, you kind of clean it up. I'm not using a burnishing tool. Uh, I'm just using, literally using my fingers and wrapping. And uh, so here we go. I uh, already made a mistake. So if you got to back up, just uh, roll back. I went over the top of my thread. Okay, here we go. So you definitely want to kind of work your way out in front of the thread that you've already laid down. And as you get close to the, the uh, seat of the guide, uh, sometimes you gotta, you know, work it up. It takes a few, uh, few layers, you know, you get it up on top and then it slides down, get it up on top and it slides down. And now these, these guides are very nicely made. Sometimes you'll get some guides that might have burrs at the foot there. And you might want to take a uh, some sandpaper, and just kind of lightly smooth smooth it off, so that you don't have a, a point where the thread doesn't want to slide down. And so actually, <laughs> this is going really well. You know, I, I had a 
camera right in front of my face when I did the orange thread and I really couldn't see very closely, but boy, I'm, I'm right on it now. I can, I can see if I overlapped my thread and I can back it off a little bit and make sure, you know, keep out in front of the thread that you've already laid down. And uh, so, wow, this is going really well. We'll uh, zip right to the end because this is, this is getting, uh, going to take a little while. Cruising right along. So now at a certain point, you're going to want to release. This is, I'm just using this twisty tie. You're going to want to release that. And I accidentally just pulled a piece of twisty tie up into my thread, but I'll get, get rid of it here. Oops. <laughs> so you definitely, definitely don't want that stuck in there. It wouldn't be very pretty. Okay. So, so I might've gone too far, but this is, this is a good time where you want to check your guide. You're going to get, you're going to get two chances to do this while you're, while you're wrapping it on. And I'm going to come down here and uh, literally look down the handle and it is definitely off. So I'm going to, I'm going to slide it this way a little bit and then recheck it. And, uh, Still just a hair off, so I'm gonna come down just a little farther again. And then I'll check it one more time. And it looks like I went a little bit too far. So I'm gonna come back just a hair. And wow, okay, now right on. Right on, right on. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep going. Oops, and uh, I'm just backing off and using my hand to spools right here. If you watch the first video, you'll see how I built this whole little machine. Okay, oh, you know what? I can't see. I wonder, it's not going so well. Okay, here we go. Yeah, if you can't see, this isn't gonna go well. So make sure you got some, some glasses that you can get, literally get your face right on, on here. So here we go, and boy, it's looking really nice. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we want to do a, a pull through. Now, I made a, a, a pull through out of yellow. Um, this is yellow braided line, 20 pound. And it's nice because it's, it's really bright. Just be careful that you don't accidentally throw it away because uh, I was cleaning up some bits and pieces and I almost grabbed this and threw it away. Making the loop is really easy. You literally just take your braided line, lay it over itself, and you make a granny knot with the end of the loop. Pass it through the hole, slide the knot area down to the location you like it. I kind of moved it forward there here. Pull it tight, and there you go. Grab the scissors, trim off the excess, and you're ready to go. What this is going to do is it's going to end your wraps. So you just lay it across here, and, and then you just, just start turning right over the top of it, just like that. Um, and then I might be able to get it from the, the, the top camera right here. So it's, it's going to be pulling your thread back through. So you'll see what happens. So I'm going to keep wrapping. And you, you know, you probably need like at least five or six turns over it. I'm probably doing more than that, but uh, you know, just to just to have a nice safe thing. I need, oh, and I don't need uh, I don't need my blue tape marker anymore. So let's get rid of that. So we are closing in very quickly on having this this uh, done. So I just keep going right up to the to where the guide starts to bend up right to the end and I'm snugging it back with my finger I'm going to come forward so literally it's like hitting like bouncing off the front of the guide and sliding down in front of it you know that is good I don't know if I can get I don't think I can get one more one more wrap there so 
So now you got to keep tension. Take your razor blade, whatever, be careful with it. And you're going to just, you know, hold this, hold tension on this line right here. Then cut your line. And then uh, what, I'm, what I did is just put my thumb right there, just for pressure's sake. And then you're going to take the tag end here, and go up through your pull through. Now, like I'm using two fingers. So well, let's, I'm going to switch there. I kind of slid up. So now this is going to actually pull this thread back underneath. And it's kind of nice to do it right here by the guide because it, it, it hides the bump. So I don't know if you can see it's starting to come through. And literally, I'm just pulling it through. Actually, it's slid down a little ways, but that's okay. So, so that ends the thread loops. And then once again, you don't want to do any slicing motion, but just lay this right where you want to cut your thread and just pull back like that. And that just pulls underneath. So there we go. That is how to wrap the guides in. Then you can come back in and, and you know, tighten things up a little bit, make sure they look nice. Uh, um, if you have the burnisher, a lot of guys will kind of run it along this way, push it down. But that looks amazing. So right now we're pretty much way over the hump. This is going to go really fast. I'm going to continue wrapping the guides. I'll probably wrap this one and then go straight into adding the epoxy. But before that, let's install the hook keeper. I built the thread up right in front of the winding check. And literally I just, I just held the hook keeper on with the thread tension and slid it down to the foot there at the base. And the, oops, be careful while you're doing that. And then just, uh, just keep wrapping it up towards the front and then uh, slide it back. I actually built the uh, hook keeper with a hook wire from uh, anodized hook that was thin. This is just a, a piece of paper clip and I used the tip of the pliers and bent it over, as you can see. And I don't know if paper clips would work. They might, I don't know if they rust, but uh, actually looks pretty good. And then I just cut the ends off so that everything is nice and even. And then as you'll see here in a second, like there's the finished hook keeper from a paper clip. But as you can see on the other side of the one that I'm about ready to wrap here, I hammered it flat. The foot part is flat. I don't know if you can see it there. I think if it turns a little bit, but then as you work your thread over that flat side, you have a nice edge. There's not a sharp lip to build the thread up and over. And it might keep it a little bit better on the on the rod. Okay, right here we've got everything we need to install our rod tip. Now, I've seen a couple of different ways that this has been done. Um, one way is to just now this is just this is just glue stick, and I uh, I sliced a piece off. Looks like a fingernail, but uh, I sliced a piece of this glue stick off. Kind of did it in a circle. But uh, I've seen some places where they literally just load load some of the glue stick in. Obviously, this doesn't want to load too well because uh, well, I cut it, but I mean, I got most of it in there. You just load it in there. You take your pliers right here. And then you, uh, you know, I'm not going to actually do it, but you heat it up. That melts and then you doop, stuff it on. That's one way. And then now the way that I was grown up shown doing this is you take your glue stick, you heat it up, melt it. Um, you can use a candle or oil lamp or whatever. You can see how it's starting to get wet there. And then you roll and I put, I put the tape on to exactly where the, the tip top guide is going to end. So you can see all that goopy blue I've got on there, maybe a little too much. I'm going to set this somewhere else so it doesn't stick to my carpet. So, so what I've got now is the glue is just 
completely loaded onto the rod blank. And then I already know that when I slide this on, it's going to go all the way to the tape. Cause once, you know, once you, once you get on there, like if you're to do the load it and it, and it started to harden, you might not know where you're at this way. You know, you are all the way down. You don't got to reheat this and the tip again and hope that it goes down. So from there, you just take your trusty lighter, candle, whatever you want to do. Sorry. Um, you want to grab this with your pliers because it wouldn't feel good not to. Um, and make sure you don't, you know, don't, don't grab around here. Don't go like that, you know, and pinch down because that's porcelain and you're either going to crack it or put a nick in it. So grab it around the metal someplace further away from the tube, the better because the heat transfers. So from there, you just uh, heat up your tube. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be super hot, but we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it hot and give it a shot right now. And then just don't go, don't wait too long and start sliding it down. I might, I might not have got, oh, there we go. We're on and that's it. Let go. And it's on. And, and this is just, uh, this is just your, you know, everyday glue stick, you know, that you'd run through a glue gun or whatnot. I actually, I got this kit from uh, Eagle Claw, it had three different sizes of tips and it came with the glue stick, which was nice. So if you've got a rod that just needs a tip, you can pick up the Eagle Claw, Eagle Claw kit uh, at a tackle shop or maybe order it online. So there's a tip. I'm going to take the, take the tape off carefully and then uh, just kind of clean this up. A lot of times you can just, you know, take your fingernail and scrape it off and peel it. Um, it looks, it appears to be that that's all it's taken, just fingertips. And then once, uh, once you get this cleaned off, um, I'm not going to clean it all the way here. Well, we'll see, but you're going to, you're going to build up a thread base and just, just like we did for the, uh, the guides on the, on the foots, you're going to start a, a thread base, you know, right in this area. And then you're going to take it up and over the, uh, tip here, just a, just a little ways. I wouldn't even say an eighth of an inch. And then, and then uh, end it, you know, and then just put your uh, epoxy, you know, over it, just like we did on everything else. And that's it. Tip's done. One more thing to mention is this is a two-piece rod. And apparently with the two-piece rods, you don't have to find the, the spine, which would be this, this rear side. And so I didn't, I did not bother doing that. Maybe somebody will think that was a mistake. I don't know, but from what I've heard, two piece rods, you don't have to do that. So there you go. Let's put it on a rod tip. Pretty easy, pretty quick. And uh, hopefully I can catch a fish with that. I gotta admit, I made a mistake. I tried to use the over the counter, off the shelf, five minute epoxy that I used to install the, the handles and real seat. Don't do that. Definitely don't do that. Um, it just, it dries way too fast. Um, you'll, you'll get an uneven coat. So I did some research and I got some flex coat from my friends down in Texas. They're in Driftwood, Texas. And this kit right here, it's, Kit number F1K. It has a, enough uh, resin in it to do four complete rods, and believe me, it does because I've already been doing some of this with it, and it's and it's perfect. So, right tool for the job, right here. As much as I'm trying to, you know, been doing all this with my own stuff and just going to the local stores, you definitely don't want to chimp on the epoxy coating on your threads. It's also a good idea to use a lighter and heat the threads a little bit. Be careful, not too much. That'll get rid of the loose threads and little fuzzies that are attached. With that said, we are going to mix some and start putting it on our, our uh, threads here. 
And it comes with uh, these two dispensers and you can measure it out evenly. It says that to do a complete rod, you need about three milliliters, but I'm, I, I, I installed the front guide on the, this butt section and then I wrapped my hook keeper. So I've got everything ready to epoxy on this section of this rod. So I, I don't need the, I'm not gonna need the three millimeters. So I'm gonna try to just do a, uh, a milliliter if I can, because this, this stuff, like I said, it goes a long way. So here we go. I'm gonna pop the cap off, set it aside. I'm gonna very carefully do about uh, one milliliter here. And I'll just squeeze easily and right there. Trip it out and I would make sure to put the same cap back on because if you put the hardener cap on the resin or vice versa, you might end up mixing and, and getting stuck, getting some glue at the, at the tip. So here we go. I'm going to put a one millimeter, one milliliter into this very carefully. And there's that. There. Cap on. And then I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to set these aside on another piece of towel. So the kit comes with the, the resin, the hardener, four mixing sticks, a, uh, a br four brushes and four clear containers. And to mix it, you, you want to go around in a circle, just like this, and it, it'll become cloudy and you can turn the cup as you go. At first it'll, it'll become cloudy. And then, uh, and then it'll get clear. So we'll just keep mixing until, until we get to that point. I did such a small amount. I want to make sure that, you know, I got it mixed really well. Cause the, you know, the one to one ratio might've been off a little bit. Hopefully not. So we're done, done mixing. Going to set this stick over to the side here. So now we're going to take our brush and just uh, just dip it right in there. And then what I've what I've been doing is just setting the cup literally right underneath. You know I have to I'm going to have to put on my second set of goggles here so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, just just get it on there liberally. And then you start at the front part of the wraps here, away from the guide. And just making start making a circle like this, and then uh, and then you want to get it out onto the blank, just past the blank. Now I've noticed this blank doesn't really want to accept the glue, but uh, strangely, it seeps out over as it dries. You'll see how this happens. So I've got it kind of wet there, and and uh, and you can be you can be liberal with this stuff. I mean. And then from there, you start working your way across. Got the guide in the way, so I gotta go this way. And just soak it in there. Just soak it into the guide. Just drench it. Now pull it across. And, and it doesn't look too pretty at first, but as you, as you build it up, and soak it into the guide, it, it, uh, it'll start laying flat. And you wanna push it around the foot of the guide to fill, cause there is an air gap, you know, between the thread and the foot here. So you push it in and I'm gonna come up to the front again and, and kinda push, do a little, you know, bit out. And it is strange, this, uh, I think it's cause there, you can see it's building up a little edge now. And just take your time. That's the nice thing about about this epoxy is you have some time to, to work it around. Okay, I'm gonna keep working towards the front part of the foot now. Like I said, be liberal. Get it on there. Really soak it into those threads. It's like almost like that. You you have a sponge, and you're working it in there. 
by soaking it there. And then on the back side, same thing. You want to go around your threads, get the thread soaked. And I'm pushing a little bit up under the foot too. You want a night, you want a little bit to get under the front part of the foot of the guide so it doesn't creak and wiggle back and forth. And I found if I if I come around in a reverse direction, I can I can swipe a little bit up underneath there. Start building it up. It should also work its way from the guide forward as you're pushing it through the threads. Just like that. And you can run along, smooth it out. And I think that is pretty good for now. Just let that, I'm gonna get a little bit, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more up on the front. I'm not really going over the edge yet, so. Get a bunch right there. And like I said, this, this blank, and, and this might just be normal there. I've got to, so I can see my line now is out past both sides. Nah. So now I'm going to do one more little brush stroke across. Start flattening it out. And, I, and it, it, you're supposed to do, for the best results, you're supposed to do two coats because the thread, it, you know, really soaks up the epoxy. And sometimes you can, you know, if you can see the thread, that's not, not so good. You don't want it to get caught or shaped on things, but you can see now it's starting to it's starting to lay down. Okay, so we're gonna load this guy up. Start at the front, brush it around. I got a big drop going there. Uh, be okay, and then uh, kind of awkward because on this one I'm actually recording with my iPhone up close. So then, so then we want to get like a, get it wet out in front of the eye here. So I'm going to hold it right here and just spin it, spin it around. No, uh, maybe I went a little too far, but that's okay. Work around the eye. I got my wrong, I got the wrong hand here. So there we go. Now we'll start working it forward. Like I said, you can be liberal with this stuff. Doesn't have to be a drag coat. Work some around this edge. Helps build it up over that lip. There we go and work it forward Just like that. Dry spot and get there. Get a little more epoxy. Nah, uh, just doing it this way because I I don't I don't have the right arm. Just load it. You really want to load it. Like I said, load it into this foot here. It's gonna it's gonna soak it up. So really push it in in there and push it in right here it down into that foot between the threads. And it's starting to look like we're getting there. A little more towards the front. And uh, like I said, I, I like to uh, go around, get that edge going, and then literally push a little bit up under the foot. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully. This way, the same same thing. It kind of gets the foot wet. Now I got to work on my edge. Start here and just kind of work it around. Around there. Looks like it's pretty good. So now I just start brushing it across. Getting it even, get those threads wet. Like that, you can see them kind of just start to disappear into, a, into the uh, epoxy, like they're soaking it up. And, uh, and at this point, it's almost like 
I, I know this sounds strange. I'm gonna I'm gonna drip a a few. I'm gonna load it up a little bit across here, and you'll see why. Because as we go, that's pretty even. As we go, it's gonna start to sag. So I'm gonna leave it there. And you'll, you'll start to see that it's going to drop and make a drip. So the, the, uh, the other thing I'm, I've been doing that seems to work really nicely is when I do get a drip, you know, that forms the base. If I see that an area that is a little thin on, on the epoxy where the threads are showing through, you can drip it at the top. And then it's gonna it's gonna cover those threads. So each time I turn it, it's gonna cover it. At this point, it's pretty much gonna just turn into a situation where you have to babysit the epoxy. Now I've learned that instead of you know if you don't have a machine that rotates, which you know like I said, you should really think about investing in that if you're gonna be building a lot of rods. Um, I'm just do, do, going to do maybe one here, one there, take this, actually take this home and I can, you know, do stuff in the evening at home. But, uh, I would, uh, what I found is, is don't re rotate straight up and straight down. At least not w when you first put the epoxy on, you're going to want to, um, rotate a quarter turn and, and go the same direction, quarter turn. And then you'll get a drip and you can and transfer some of that to the top and then do your quarter turn and then and then do that. And then at a certain point, it's going to it's going to start drying. And then I would switch over to straight up and straight down. And the reason for that is I'm going to use my hands to kind of show you if you if you just go straight up and straight down, it's going to turn into this sag on each side. And it's going to get uneven on one side or the other and start making a, a weird spot. So if you if you rotate quarter, it'll kind of come down and then rotate a quarter and, and, and it'll come out more even all the way around the rod. But then when you get to the point where you kind of can tell it's starting to slow down, I would, you know, finish off with straight up and straight down. And then if you're going to go to bed, and you're kind of, you know, a little bit, you know, not sure about what to do or you just can't watch it anymore. Put it like this, because if you do get a, a you know, a, a sag or a drip, it will kind of end up where the foot is right in here. And, and you don't and you won't notice it as much. I mean, you might notice it, but because the foot already has a little bit of a bump right here. Um, it won't be as noticeable, but obviously you want to watch it for as long as you can. This guy right here has one coat of epoxy and there's a couple of little bumps here and you can just take your razor blade and just scrape those little bumps off. Just kind of don't, don't dig in, just slide across, push them off, scrape them off. This is the same technique that uh, guys that paint cars will do if they get a run with their clear. They'll put a little bend in their razor and then just kind of scrape the, the sag off. I mean, the, that's for guys that are really good. But anyway, just scrape it down. And you can see on the ends here, the threads are showing a little bit. So just a light second coat to cover those threads and then to go over the top of where I scrape those bumps off. And it'll be perfect. I want to thank Lamy Glass. Actually, I've got this rod. Uh, this one's pretty much done. I might put another coat on the wraps on a few spots, but it's all done. But I want to thank Lamy Glass. And you can go to their website. Um, they have a ton of different blanks, all the way from surf fishing to bluegill. Um, and yeah, you can go to their website, order blanks. And, uh, and I also want to thank Flexcoat for sending me the epoxy for the wraps um, because honestly, um, you can use the five minute epoxy on your handles and, and like, like it says, you, you know, you got to move quick, but 
it sets up nice, it sets up fast. And actually you could probably go from, I waited I waited overnight on, on this handle section in the butt, but I think in just a few hours, you could have moved on to the, the right and the front part of the handle and continued from there. But I just waited overnight on that. Um, so yeah, thank you Flexcoat. They sent me the, uh, the epoxy and like I said, definitely, use a quality product for when you're coating the wraps. Otherwise it's just not going to come out with a, you know, a good quality finish. Thanks for watching. And if anybody has any comments or questions or they want to add to this, please feel free to comment. I'll be watching and commenting myself. I think that's everything. I, I don't, I, I hope I didn't forget something along the way. Um, if I did, we'll use the comment section. So thanks for watching.